Hello, I'm Stephen Winston, Director of Software Engineering at Holochip, and there's a few things I want to share with you about some of the advances our R&D team has made. First, let me tell you about Holochip, a relatively small developer with some military clients. Our products range from solutions targeting command and control use cases to custom XR hardware. Our XR devices target use cases spanning from flight simulators to naval maintainers. Our XR devices use everything from fluidic lenses to waveguides to freeform prisms to achieve state-of-the-art rend rendered tasks in difficult custom environments. However, it is in the command and control use case I'd like to draw a focus on for a bit and talk about a new technology enabled by Vulcan ray tracing. In command and control applications, there's a need for rendering many disparate displays from different viewpoints from different locations on the same rendering server. Imagine a Rebel Alliance planning an attack on a Death Star, uh, having a room full of warriors looking at a light field projected Death Star, then give their buddies in the ro next room multiple tablets, laptops, desktops, and VR devices, and let them join in on the briefing remotely. Pretty soon, one can see how complicated the rendering task becomes with multiple dynamic view frustums all looking at the same scene in real time with very little latency all requiring 3D view capable information. This type of use case inspired an API technology, the Agnostic Display Environment, or ADE. Using the ADE, one can render it to any light field, AR, VR tablet, or traditional 2D display for the exact same computational cost as rendering the same number of pixels as there are in traditional ray tracing to a normal 2D screen. Both can be achieved in real time. Now I'd like to pause for a bit on the military use case backstory in order to delve a bit more into light field technology that ADE can deliver to the game and entertainment realm. One of my favorite games is Alone in the Dark. For you younger kids, think Thief. And for you really young kids who don't know either of those games, think Hitman. Over the years that I've been playing games, I've probably spent hours camping behind some wall or pillar hoping the shadows would cover my avatar just enough until the guard would turn his back and I could sneak to the next objective. Well, my inner gamer is floored by the ability that real-time light fields can bring to the table. See, with a light field, that familiar scene literally has the same properties as if it were real. You can physically peek around the corners. It's so real that if you and two of your friends were to sit next to each other looking at the exact same screen, you'd each have a different view as if the three of you were actually standing behind that corner in individual locations. Your buddy to your right or to your left might feel totally exposed to that patrolling guard while the other one would see just the wall. Each of you would be totally oblivious to the other's vantage points unless they or you physically walked over to them. So let's elaborate. Virtually walk up to a corner with your mouse or keyboard and move your physical body to the side and you will see what's on the other side. There's no camera, no tricks, no timing and no dark magic. Just all the views required for the sorcery are rendered at once in a light field. I'd like to demo this phenomenon to you. For this demo, we're going to use the Looking Glass Factory's 4K horizontal parallax display. To achieve horizontal parallax, the Looking Glass display requires 45 views rendered all at once uh, in a quilt. Traditional multi-view rendering can get you up to 16 views on the latest cards and a lot of wasted loops over the same scene slightly offset from the previous. While the ADE, uh, we can render all 45 views at once in a single frame. What's more, we can go straight to a radiance image, skipping the quilt with thousands of disparate views with no additional computational cost. If you could render it in 2D, then ADE can help you render it to a light field on the same hardware. Once you have the, your radiance image, there's a thick bunch of optics that lay over the pixels, driving the display 
that translate the radiance image into a 3D holographic light field display. The horizontal parallax, parallax limitation, as I mentioned previously, that Looking Glass has in their light field hardware means that you can physically slide to the left, right, and see a different view. But going up, down, results in the same view. Now that we have our tool set, let's think back about a problem. I want a 3D game that I can show beautiful ray tracing quality in real time and then can also allow me to peek around a corner to see the bad guy and know when it's safe to sneak around him. Thus, may I present id Software's Quake 2. Open, it's an open source game as modified by NVIDIA for ray tracing. You may download the original Quake 2 RTX demo from Steam or GitHub and enjoy playing some rather marvelous looking ray tracing scenes yourself, albeit sans light field. Well, every one of those beautiful scenes works as is in a direct translation to our ADE enabled service with very little code add addition. A simple shader will turns it all on or off. Our R&D team at Holochip have modified this game to allow me to live out my sneaky aspirations and demonstrate this technology. Here I am showing you the Holochip wall peak as captured with my cell phone camera. Notice I'm not moving the new view virtually with a keyboard or mouse. Notice also there's no clunky camera or hard headset that must be worn. There are no tricks here. All rendering is local to a two-year-old laptop. What I am doing is moving my phone physically and looking around the corner, just as if I were playing the game. Wall peak achieved. Now I know when I can successfully sneak to the next location free of worry. And because I know it's not Quake without some twitch run and gun action, this is what happens when you anger two grunts trying to protect their base all while we laugh at their poor aim and their unreasonable fear of water. Only now do we truly realize that sneaking isn't how one plays Quake. Enjoy!